Let's let's bring I, I, I people that are like you know intellectually there. But I want to understand. What Sing, you're come, you're come, brother, yes, come, brother. Right. Sing, because the audience doesn't understand us. So I want to I want to tell you something, right? So is, and the, the, the Muslim audience they don't understand us. Is he representing it? So I'm representing it perfectly. Oh, okay, so cool. Now I told him, yeah. right? Yeah. I told him that you can explain this rationally how the intelligible operations make the relations really distinct in the Trinity, right? Uh, uh, what Aquinas said in uh, question 28. Oh, as in so, the distinction between like intellect and will. Uh, okay. Sense. My fucking okay. guy. Uh, Nigerians, we uh, got in the bag. Mashallah. Okay, we got in the bag. Can you explain it to me? Maybe you can help me. We're trying to understand on his other on his, side. There's no other side, bro. There's no other side. Would you say... Yeah, I'm going to block, that one. Gonna block that one. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they don't have separate wills. Yeah. They don't, they have, they don't the, have they're identical will. in wills. So. Identical wills, no separate wills, no separate power. No. They have one will, uh, one power. Okay, yeah. no problem. Well, can you explain to me what the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Son, the Holy Spirit is? I don't really understand the question, but if what you mean is what makes those things like distinct, for example, like okay. what makes the Father and Fine. the Son Fine. distinct. Yeah. So it's going to be due to the notions. So Aquinas has this like finally. No, what okay. Happened? There was some good wrestling going on. I, there. I know, but it, he, I got called. So okay, oh, so ahead. I'm assuming you've read um, the prima pars on this issue, yes? Don't assume I've read anything, please. Start, no, please, because please, deal with me like I'm a complete beginner, no. which I am. Tell me in the, okay. the beginning. The only reason now, is when you when you talk about Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Look, the only reason is is because yeah, yeah. if you were explaining something to me yeah. and I already have assumed prior knowledge, there would be yeah. no reason as to why no, you would need to explain uh, the Father. Exactly. I'm sorry, I'm not asking you to ask me what I've read. I'm asking you. No, just, I'm just saying if you're familiar. Uh, Sid, I'm just I'm not familiar. That's why I'm asking. Okay, a question. there you go. Okay. I'm, the, I'm asking a question. Yeah, yeah. He's saying that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They have one will. Yeah. They have one power. Yeah. My question to you is, so therefore, what is the relationship between the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit? What relationship do they have with each other? So, the relationship what, that they and, have and with each other? And going back to what you said, what makes them distinct? Go ahead. So, what makes them distinct would be the notion. So, Aquinas um, has this idea yeah. that with certain persons, there's going to be certain concepts attributed to them. So, for the Father, there's going to be two notions. I believe it's inassibility and Explain paternity. That. Paternity. Yeah. So, inassibility is going to be the idea that the Father does not proceed from any person in a logical sense. Exactly. Okay. And then paternity is going to be the idea that the Father um, begets the Son. Now, there's going to be another idea as well, which is going to be... Yeah, I'm just explaining. Yeah, you don't need to... Yeah, so <laughs> when it comes to the idea of the Son, uh, and I'll come back to the Father because there's one more, but it has to be explained in light of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Uh, the Son is going to have the idea of filiation, which is the passion in regards to the action of paternity. And I'm assuming you know what action and passion are. Now, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, there's going to be this idea of passive spiration. This is the passion in relation to the action of active spiration, which is attributed to the Father as well. And in Catholic missiology, specifically on the issue of the filioque, they would also attribute active spiration to the person of the Son as well. So there's around five notions in God. So these things are going to act as distinguishing like notions. So, so what makes the Father distinct from the Son? Oh, that's the fact that he has inassibility and paternity. I explained that before. Can you explain it again, please? So inassibility is the idea that the father does not proceed from any other person. Okay. So, so paternity sure. is just going to be the fact that the father so, begets the son. The father does not proceed from any other person. Yeah. Yet the son does. The son proceeds from the father, yeah. From the father. How? Yeah. How? Yeah, how does that happen? Intelligible operations. Oh, yeah. So the idea, is this the, the thing? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Aquinas, again, I'm assuming you haven't read it, yeah. Aquinas says in question. Hello. Aquinas says in question 28, and I think we went over this last time we had dinner. Um, yeah. Aquinas says in question 28 um, that on the part of God, you could think of, uh, in an analogous way, um, on the part of God, you could think of the procession of the sun as some sort of intelligible operation. So the idea. What does that mean? Yeah, so the procession of, I believe it's the procession of 
the intellect itself in the Noah. So the idea, of, yeah, so he pulls from Augustine who uses the idea of knowledge in the Trinity. So the person of the Father knowing everything, you would agree that the person of the Father knows everything? I'm asking if you agree. I don't believe in the person of the Father. So it's, we could just use the, I'm principle, a Muslim, so the principle of God, right? Principle okay. of God as existence. Would he know everything? Yeah. Okay. Would he also know himself? Oh, can we just stick to? I'm, I'm learning I'm from you. I'm actually. I understand. Yeah, yeah. And the way so can, that. Can we get to? And I am. I actually, relations. this this is the relation. What is the relation? The relation of the what, father begetting the son. Intelli uh, intelligent operations. Intelligible, intelligible operations. Intelligible operations. Yeah, can you explain that to me? I was, yeah. and I was doing that the way Aquinas did, yeah. exactly. by starting with the person of God, for our Father. Now, since you rejected that, I just substituted the word Father for Allah, so it can make sense to you. No, but we don't believe in that. So father, when God like says, for example, yeah. that God knows. So when Aquinas says that God knows everything. He also says that God knows himself in a supreme and eminent way. Sure. Now, he also knows himself... Is that himself, the Father or the Triune God? Uh, this is referring to the idea of how you could conceive of the Father knowing himself. So, okay. he says that the Father, since in knowing himself, knows everything about himself, including his property of existence and essence as exactly. being identical. So that that thing, oh, including his property of existence and essence as being identical, he would also say that this knowledge of himself, this self-knowledge, would also really exist. Now, this is going to be constitutive of a second reality. And this is what we would describe as the sun. So the intellectual emanation is in this sense. This is the analogy that Aquinas tries to suppose. And it comes from Augustine and I believe Boethius as well. Okay, yeah, Boethius, so, yeah. Okay, beautiful. Super substantial. So, uh, 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 I have regard to it. All right. Intellectual emanation. It's, it's only just going to be like analogous to the way that this thing can be done. So. Can, you, can you explain through analogy yeah. how intellectual emanation will work? How intellectual emanation yeah. will work? So, the father, the son. so it's just going to be on the part of the mind itself. So the mind itself is going to conceive of itself of as itself. doing the thing. Yep, exactly. And then by okay. reason of doing that, there's going to I be think, uh, some an object. Of, yeah, when yeah. you say intellectual object, emanation, yeah. is there something happening from the father which is distinct and then leading to the son? Uh, no. So for Aquinas, he would say that this is a temporal and infinitely present. So he just believes that infinitely present. Yeah. So this is actually something that Ibn. So, sorry, sorry, say that again. Infinitely, infinitely present. present. We were both saying at the same time. Infinitely present. present. Yeah. So the idea, yeah. right, is um, just, and this is from like classical, yeah. um, it's just classical from metaphysics, both okay. in the Islamic tradition as well as the Christian tradition, as yeah. you know. The idea is going to be that since God is going to be outside of time, these operations, these ad intra, uh, meaning uh, within, uh, these ad intra operations of God are going, pardon me, are going to. Yeah, so these are the operations on the part of God, yeah. right? Um, uh, there was not going to be a time in which the process began and sure. it should not be seen as a sort of process in any sense. There was no temporal succession of events. It's just simply for him it's going to be the case, which is just like the idea of it is the case that God exists okay. rather than there's can a point I, in time when God started to exist or sure. that God continues to exist. From my yes. understanding, and both of you have said this before, please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Aquinas believes in the divine simplicity, right? Yes, he does. Yes. Okay, sure. Now, is the father ontologically separate from the son? No. No. Is, okay, fine. So the and father, by ontology, what do you mean? So the father and the son are the same. I just wanted to ask you, by ontology, what do you mean? Before you do the thing... Now, hold on. Is the father ontologically separate from the son? What does that mean? Because I, I have an idea of ontology, uh, right? Um, are they separate entities? Are they separate entities? Yes. If by entity you just mean existences, then no, they're not separate existences. No, they're not separate no. existences. So for Aquinas, the existence of the Father and the Son are going to be the same. However, the and hypostasis, which is the underlying reality of the Father, and the underlying so, so reality it, of the Son. So would, would it be fair to say that the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, are just names for the same thing? They're not names for the same thing, no. What they are, are they? names that are going to pick out specific underlying realities. Now, yeah. the hypostasis of the Father has the same existence, as Aquinas says, as the hypostasis of the Son, due to the idea that the existence of God is identical to the essence of God, of which you would agree, right? That existence and essence in God are the same. There's different opinion among scholars. We come I'm to asking mind. for your opinion. No, but there's different opinion. The reason why is if no, us, but, but, the reason why I'm asking this yeah, question, yeah, Mohammed, yeah. is because if you have a different notion or idea of these concepts like essence, existence, existence sure. uh, um, hypostasis, yeah. reality, so on, 
then we're obviously going to be talking past each other. No, no, I agree. I agree. Right, so and because you agree, sure. just, just for the, and just because you agree, just yeah. right now, yeah. could you please adopt a view that is either that you agree with the idea of that what? S. No, I don't you, to adopt. you don't. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I can be uh, agnostic to that point. Why would you be agnostic to Why whether not? God has no, 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 existence no, no, no. and essence? You, you've asked me the question about whether there's a distinction between essence and existence. Yeah. The, my response to that is. I've looked at different uh, traditions about that, and I'm still making my mind. That's so my, you don't know? No, my, uh, I haven't made up my mind on that. So you don't know? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and that's okay, okay sure, sure. right? So, so well, I'll come back to you now, mm -hmm. and I'm asking you a question, yeah. which is that, is the father a separate thing to the son? Is the father a separate thing? Yeah. No. And the reason why is because in Aquinas' uh, scholastic theology, okay. there are definitions of distinction. Now, yes. just so that so yes. that I don't become pedantic, right? No, no, good. You understand what a, um, a real distinction is, correct? Explain to me what, what you think it is. Because Not what let, I think. Let, let, let me, let, let, hold on. This is very important. Let me tell you why. The reason why this is important is because Aquinas uses terms yep. that are not used in the same context in the same way by other thinkers. So I need to always ask you what you mean by it. I think a real distinction Wait, when does Aquinas just... use no, different no, words in different contexts? He, context? he, he does. Trust Could me. you give an example? No, I don't want to. That's like saying, no. trust me, bro. I need you to give an example. Yeah, so sure. Uh, for example, the essence and uh, existence distinction. When does he give a different definition so, of the essence existence no, distinction? No, let me explain. So for example, in the Islamic tradition, yeah. where you have like Avicenna or uh, Ibn, Ro Ibn Rushd yeah. or Abi Rose and these yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. they have a completely different understanding of that. Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah has a completely different understanding of that. So, oh, oh, it, hey, Avicenna does not have a different understanding so, of uh, yeah, essence. He's, no, he does yeah, not. So no, he does not. It's very important. No, please, so. no, he does not. Yeah, in Islamic no, philosophy, not. like the Aristotelian, prove it, prove it. the Aristotelian category of like existence is pretty much the same. Bro, from you just say shit, bro. Yeah, I mean, look, here's You're the just thing. saying I'm, I'm it. I'm sensing an extreme disrespect from you, but I don't see why. I don't see why. You're yeah. sensing a, di a disrespect from yeah, yeah, me. It's okay, it's okay. Oh, it's I'm so sorry. Hail yeah, Muhammad Ijab. Thank you. Don't worry, there's no like, guns inside or anything. Look, look, look. Bro, you're the Bro, brother. Just one second. The my point is this. Let me explain. Divine simplicity is the idea that God is is not composed of anything in terms of parts or attributes even which have a separate ontological distinction from other attributes no not really no it does mean that's let me, not let me, what no, let me let me finish let me let me let me explain i will correct you no, no hold on you don't need to correct me no because you're wrong so for example, you're, no you're actually me, wrong on this point so like this is the first time me, i'm saying that you're wrong no, like, you are wrong so i know here. you say that so you can say what you like i know because it's true you are do, wrong do people that believe in divine simplicity yeah. believe that god has actual power has actual power yeah, actual power as an ontological entity separate from the essence he no, just think, he thinks real power. distinctions are separations. That's yeah, what he which thinks. Is the issue, yes. That's the issue. So, uh, so yeah. So, divine simplicity. He don't thinks every that God has a separate attribute known as power, uh, known as actual power. And actual power isn't even a term. So, there are two is, ideas is, of power. Well, I'm going to explain. There does, are two God, does God have actual power or not? Again, I'm going to explain. Yeah. So, the idea among the divine simplists, right, yeah. is that there are two types of power. So, yeah. active, not actual, active, active power and impassive power. Uh, in Latin, it's going to be like active potentia and then passive potentia. Now, for Aquinas, God has active potentia in the highest degree. However, you were wrong when you said that divine simplists believe that the attributes have to be separate things. No. Uh, they, no, no. Let me ask you a question. They don't believe no, that. Let me ask you a question. Their problem of composition, brother, I'm going please. to just finish. Look, brother, please. I have to finish. Look, let it be a dialogue. Let it be a dialogue. I know, and it's my part of the dialogue okay, right now. Ahead, Thank you. So. When it comes to Aquinas, Aquinas believes that the problem is going to be in composition. Those two things don't have to be separate. For example, the distinction between a body and a soul. A body and a soul aren't separate, okay. right? Even in heaven, yet they are still composite. Okay. okay? Let's, let's, and the let's... reason that they're composite is because they are something about the subject, and I've told you this before, there's something about the subject that is not the whole of the subject. Now, my question no, no, brother, to you please, would no, be, in, in this dialogue, let me come back on this. would be if you agree brother, with that. Please, brother. Oh, my back what, what is the what is the knowledge of God? What is knowledge? What knowledge. Is knowledge, knowledge uh, for us is just going to be the possession of a form without becoming that form. No, not for us. What does the word knowledge mean? What does knowledge mean? Yeah. What's what is the distinction between knowledge and power? Explain it to me. So again, you're being vague with the question because I explained what the term knowledge meant, and then you said, "What does it mean again?" And then I just explained it. Okay, brother. This is a simple question. Of all due respect, uh, knowledge. Really. You know, it is. 
because no, otherwise everyone would have the same definition. Well, they pretty much do actually on this. No, they don't. No, they don't. Well, they have a very similar definition on knowledge. Just for you. No, they don't. Yes, well. You have more than analyticists that have like just. Why do you keep saying please? Well, You're wrong. Like, if I say, okay, we're wrong. Okay, I'm very wrong. No problem. When I say this person has power, is it different to saying that he has knowledge? Is it is different or the same thing? Well, on the part of him, yes. So. Oh, in the part of him, yes. Okay. On the part of him. So with him, for example, if I say he has power, I'd explain or strength, something like that. I'm talking about his ability to move things his will, right? When I'm talking about knowledge, I'm talking about how much he has information in his mind, for example. Information you in his mind. Information, so, or... Because uh, uh, again, for example, I'm... Knowledge, so, so, for example, knowledge, the classical definition of it, which I've come across, which most people agree with, is idrak al which is the idea of knowing things which are informative. So knowing... So, sorry, so, sorry, sorry. so knowledge sorry, sorry, is sorry, sorry, knowing sorry, things sorry, that are informative. Sorry, sorry, I made a mistake. You did. So, uh, knowledge is... Having possession of informative facts. Okay. Having possession of informative, informative facts. Yeah, information. So, uh, like, like information. and again, so, okay, you said this is the classical... I, yeah. I just want to clarify something. Hold on, one second, you one said second. it's the classical definition, hold right? On, hold on, hold is on. That, is that Aristotelian? Do you, do you is you that accept, Avicenna? Do you accept there's a difference between knowledge and power, or not? Again, I can't answer that In question general. because I'm if still... If I say this person has knowledge, the and he has power, I'll is explain that, is why the same What do you mean by knowledge? Hold on, hold on. Okay, what I mean by the reason is, I can't answer the so, question so, so, is because brother, there still please. seems to be an he's issue. He's asked me a question now. He's asked me a question. He said, what yeah, do I he mean just asked the question. I said, so what I want to say is, he has knowledge. Say, if, if he reads, for example, he can take that information inside. So he has possession of information. If I say he has power or strength, it means he can move situations like bench press, this kind of thing. That's the difference between the two things. Would you agree? Is that a vernacular understanding of the difference between knowledge and power? Not exactly, that's more so like aspectival. So well, whatever it is, would you accept this distinction here? In the case of this man. But it's not going to be on the part of what you No, mentioned. no, in the case of this man, is there, is there a distinction between knowledge and power? Yes or no? You're moving away from the definition. I'm asking a question. Is there yeah, a Yeah, because you're moving away from the definition, which I wanted to ask you. Is there a distinction? We're just driving a specific brother, Is argument. there a distinction between knowledge and power? Yes, in now I can get back to the point of discussion I wanted to raise before. Is there a distinction between knowledge I already, I referred to my answer before. I said yes. Now. Yes, yes. Okay, excellent. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I okay. now get to respond. Now, in this. Sorry. There's no, there's, I haven't asked you a question yet. You, asked, asked, you no, just asked me, is no, there a distinction between power and knowledge? Is I, that a question? I haven't asked you a question yet. Yes, you did. No, it, I, I, I want to ask. No, but I was preambling. Is between knowledge and power? Is that a question, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, Thank I'm, you. So now I'm that you've asked the question. Hold on. Now that you've asked the question. Now, with God, is there a different? Is, is there a distinction between knowledge and power? I'm going again. I wanted to touch on the point. With God, I wanted to touch on the point. Is, with God, is so there the a distinction why, between knowledge so and power So again, there's something that needs to be touched on. And with I God, is there a there's distinction something between that knowledge needs to be and power touched on. There's a reason why it needs to be touched on. Because with you God, said is this there is, a distinction between knowledge and power look, or not? I'm just going to continue. Because you is said... There a distinction? Hold on. Let him talk. So you said you don't that... Know. I know, I just want to... No, yeah. can, you, uh, can you explain? The reason why... Is there a distinction between God? Because he, wants to drive, he just wants to drive a script. He just wants to drive a script. So the issue that I have... Are you running? Why are you running? I'm not I'm asking a question. Alright, me too. I'm not running, I'm asking a question. Answer him. Answer him. Because you know you got folded at him. No, is there a question? Because you know you got folded by him. I'm just going to continue. So the term classically is going to be an Aristotelian notion. Now... Which one? Uh, Aristotelian, so it's going to be hylomorphic, right? I'm asking so a question, a is there a distinction between knowledge and power? You said something and it's correct to I you. already said that. On the yes part no? of a man, yes, because hylomorphic. On the part of God? On the part of God? Yes. Yeah, on the part of God, uh -huh. within God, there's not going to be a distinction. Uh -huh. Now, again, the reason why, because composition so God, oh, is going to be an issue. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, okay, excellent. Yeah, no, 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 so I'm, going to know. I'm going to finish God my question. Know I'm, going to, I'm just going Wait. to finish my question. God is ignorant. No. Your God is ignorant. My definite, yeah, thank you, right? It's because, God, it's, it's again, God now the reason is, is because he actually has it's a composition view of knowledge. Now, again, I'm going to finish. It's God's knowledge I'm just going to, your Muslim brother is telling you to let me finish. This is Let me complete. Let me complete. Let me complete. Let me, this let is finish. low. Let me finish. The let fact that you can't let him finish. talk is low. No, 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 look. He's years no, no. younger than you. That's He's not a Christian. He's a Muslim. He's years younger than you. Just let him talk. Just let him talk. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He can answer these man. questions. It's fine. It's got powerful now, or not? As I was explaining before, right, and I think everyone else wants to actually hear the answer that I have. Go ahead. The idea of power is going to be the ability to actualize potency. potency this is the exactly. classical definition, okay. not what you said. Okay. Now, the definition of knowledge is going to be the ability to possess a form without becoming the form itself. Yeah. This is a Thomistic idea as well as an Aristotelian idea. And this okay. is the classical idea. Yeah, sure. Now, again, on the part of God, God's ability to possess forms is actually simply his active power. Now, we can conceive of those what two different notions. Its active power would be the ability to actualize
potencies. Now, one of the potencies that is being actualized is his ability to be able to possess forms. Now, I'm saying that on the part of God, God eternally is able to possess these things. However, the distinction between God's possession of forms and our possession of forms is in us, we are able to possess some sort of, you know, temporal contingent form. You, 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 only, pro you only provide a definition between knowledge and power, but what he, what he asked, asked it was a is there a distinction between, between knowledge both, and power? Yeah. Yes. And I'm explaining that the distinction is going to be on the part of the reason reasoning. Now the reason why, okay, and this I mean, is something... I don't understand. Yeah, so Avicenna had a similar idea, but he's going, but he wasn't necessarily right, so analogous. So there, there is no distinction on the... Let's yeah. be clear. Yeah. Now, let's be clear. The let's reason, be clear. Hold on, let's hold be on. clear. There is no distinction on the Thomistic view on knowledge and power in an actual sense. There is no. Oh my gosh. Okay, because look. There is no. So knowledge and power. Knowledge and power. Knowledge and power. Knowledge and power. That's why they can say the Father is the Son, the Son is the Why do you keep manipulating us? Why don't you let us talk? Oh, why don't you let us talk? Why don't you let Christians talk? Why do you let 20 year old Christians talk? That's why you believe in what you Why don't you let teenagers talk? Why don't you let teenagers talk? Because if you define the term. Okay, so why do you interrupt us then? Where's the respect? Talk about this. So why were you complaining about me disrespecting you if you don't need the respect? Where you say that there are inside, bro. This guy is wet, bro. So he did say there's no distinction between knowledge and power. Right, yeah. What did I also say? So that's how we yeah. understand it. But you're saying on the path to God, there is yeah. a distinct uh, brother, uh, brother, my, said, my brother, my brother, now, what my I brother. Also said my brother was that on my brother, the part my brother, of the creature, my brother, the reason, reason as to why there's going to be distinction uh, yes. is because the definition, the constitutive definition of knowledge and power are going to be able to signify different things. That's not an issue. Issue. But that's yeah. incommensurate. The reason that we exactly. have, how can you say that the God reason is that we have these things, but at the same time, yeah. the Trinity. exactly. Wait, how what? can you have a, a exactly. divine simplicity and Trinity? Exactly because Aquinas makes because yeah. Aquinas so, so, argues so they, 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 they don't even want to distinguish so, between because the power of God and the knowledge of God. But at the same time, you can have a distinction God. between the now, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. There are three categories that he generally gives. They're trying to divide the divine attributes. He gives the divine message, and then he gives the You know, we're gonna cut you. That's why he keeps interrupting us. Aquinas, you, you know can have going, real relations. The knowledge and power in him is really this thing to God the only virtue. So let me go back and in fact, he takes this from Aristotle. Yeah, but the confusion is that Thomas Aquinas... Run away, run away! That's not an issue. Okay. But so the idea of divine simplicity yeah. is going to be that. So the reason that you don't want to speak to me... Bro, what are you saying, man? No, you weren't. No, you weren't. What you were doing is you were repeating the question. So I'm going to ask you. Do you God's existence is different from his essence. He said you don't know. The question that I want to ask you now is, does God have multiple attributes? Yes. Okay. And these things are going to be non-identical to, other, to others. Do you believe that? No. Answer the question. Yeah, yeah, answer the question. Wait, wait, so, wait, 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 What's going to be the consequence? Yeah, I don't understand why oh, this. So don't speak like that, brother. So yeah, let's just calm down. Yeah. So when it comes, yeah. yeah. So the idea is this, right? Do something about it. Are you threatening a teenager now? Yeah, yeah. You threatening a teenager? Yeah, I'm teenager. Okay, so why are you threatening a teenager? Why are you threatening a teenager? You're talking to me. What are you going to do again? So you're saying if you don't do this again, I just want to know what your consequences are. What are the consequences? Knowledge is something. Please, you don't have any consequences. Hold on, hold on. So this is fine. You have to understand. Yeah. How so? Knowledge, right? Because they're not. With all due respect. With all due respect, I've been very polite with you. I've been very polite. Have you been polite with them or not? No, you've not. Okay, have I been polite with them I've been polite. Right. No, so I've been, okay. So, I don't think you have not been reasonable. I, I have been reasonable, and the reason I, is, is because what you've done I'm, is you've got multiple attributes. Yeah. Yes. And I said yes. And then I said, and I, do then you believe said, in that? Then you started talking over then me. I, no. What you so you did that same you did the same thing before. Him, like, now what, what you did before right. is you tried right. to say, are they the same? Are they the same? And then I tried to explain the God's definition. knowledge the same as God's power? Now again, when we come to the specific attributes, why can't you answer my question? I refer to what I said before. Now when it comes to, I refer to what I said before. Okay. When it comes to, you don't answer the question because in this dialogue. Because in this dialogue, the question that needs question. to be asked is whether knowledge is something okay. about well, Allah that is in the whole of Allah. You're, 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 is knowledge the, something brother, about brother, Allah that is in the whole brother, of Allah? Yes or no? Is knowledge that, something about... When you about, say whole part, what do you mean by that? So a part is going to be, in basic muriology, something about a subject that is not the whole of a subject. Yes. 
That is just going to be yeah, what no, part but is. The reason why I'm basic neurologist, there's, there's nine different definitions of a part. Exactly. There's no, nine there's nine different usages of a part. Yeah, yeah sure. That's why it's important to understand. under the because same definition in basic of a part. It's just a basic neurologist, nine definitions. Mm -hmm. You can say this is a part of his personality, or you can say it's a part of a cake, and they mean two different things. Now, the part of so, a cake... So, hold on. So, hold on, hold on. Yep, so, what, what, what we were talking before, I asked you, is the hold knowledge... Hold on, because we're talking about muriology uh, now. Right? Now, you the reason I interrupted him is because he wanted to move away from muriology. He wanted to move away from muriology to a previous question, as you noticed. To you, my friend. Uh, you're, about you're muriology kind of, specifically. You want to speak for two minutes and then me for two minutes? If you are speaking on muriology specifically, and I'm not going to move to a different thing. You want to speak for two minutes and then me for two minutes? Again, if you only answer the specific things that have been brought to the discussion, sure. Maybe he was going back to that. So, if but that had you already would like been to speak settled. for one minute and then I speak for one minute? No, that's that fine. Fair? So, no, that's fine. I'll, I, I can speak for because one minute. Because I can't speak to you right now. I feel like I can't discuss with you. No, I feel like you can't. I feel like you can't discuss with me because there are certain notions you want to drive down. Should I put this? This Look, I can, put a time, I can put a timer no, on my this phone. One minute, one I each. can put a timer on my phone. Right, you right, go and first, then you can go. and then I'll uh, answer. So, here, here, look. If you want to put a timer on the phone. Forth. No, it's fine. You can have we your can, phone. We can, put, we can put a timer on the phone, right? Go, so, please. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to just put a timer on the phone, right? And what I want to establish is a specific idea. So, one minute, go, right? Now, go. you believe that God has multiple attributes. Now, the question I asked him was pertaining to knowledge, is knowledge something about God? That isn't the whole of what God is. Now, I then gave this reason because under Mariology, every single definition of a part, whether proper or improper parts, are going to coalesce under the same notion of that of a subject that it is not pertaining to the whole. Part of a cake is going to be something about a cake that isn't the whole of a cake. Part of a tree, same thing. Parts of time, something about the general constants of time that is not the whole of time. So, to answer this very specific question, is knowledge something about Allah that is not the whole of Allah? Now, if you cannot answer the question, please explain certain reasons why. And if you can answer the question, then we can move on with that form of dialogue. Because that is the thing about divine simplicity that is trying to be denied. Composition okay, or parthood up, yeah. on the part of God. Now my time's up. Okay, so you have one minute. My view is, there's three views in Islam, okay? There's the view of the divine simplicity, uh, divine simplicity which is the view of Averroes, and the view of Ibn Sina. It's the same view as, uh, <coughs> as espoused by to uh, Thomas Aquinas, but it's not the same. The second view is the view of the Mu'tazilis, which is that the attributes of God are within the essence of God, which is why I said it's, it's a very important distinction. So they all believe it's all within the same essence. So the attributes and essence distinction, they don't make one. It's all within the same essence. And the third view is the view of the Ash'aris and the Hanbalis, which is that the attributes of God are ontologically separate from the essence of God. That's the view that I personally take. The, the view of the Ash'aris and the Hanbalis, which is the view that that God has multiple attributes, all of which are uh, separate and distinct about. For example, the knowledge of God is different from the power of God, the power of God is different from the uh, will of God, and so on and so forth. Yeah, separate. Separate. So, separate. so, my question is, do you believe that the knowledge of God is the same as the power of God, or are they different? Time was up. So, I'm glad I'm... Oh, yeah. So, so I'm glad you actually brought that uh, clarification, uh, which was not necessarily a clarification because that was already Sorry? done. I'm glad you said that they were separate because that would mean that God is going to be in a greater form of composition, right? The person of Allah, you would believe that Allah is going to be some sort of um, subject of reference, so a subject that you can refer to. I'll just pause my time because that was fun. So you would believe that Allah is a subject of reference. And because of this, the subject is going to be both the essence and the attributes. The person of Allah is going to be for you both the essence and the attributes because you believe that the essence is separate from the attributes, as you've said. Now, because that is the case, it is still going to be part of the subject, Allah, the individual that holds, that formally constitutes both the essence and the attributes. As you can see, there's going to be a problem of composition there. So, to answer your question fairly, as I have five seconds, if I run a bit over time, forgive me. Um, on the part of God, I would, for the purpose of this conversation, I'm it's going to ascribe to a Western view. Yeah. All right, sure. Yeah. So, I've just explained, I've answered your question very clearly. I said that, yes, I believed in the essence of uh, di different from the attributes of God. There's this separate. separate, no problem. And when I say separate, I'm not talking about separability from an... Uh, physical perspective that you can. Uh, no, I, I would never. I would never see that. Brother, I'm my time. Sorry, sorry. I'll uh, pause. I'll pause. I would never accept that. 
Yeah, go on. Yeah, I paused it when I was speaking. Because yeah. I don't want to, you know. That's the view of, as I say, the Hanbalis and the Ash'is and the Maturidites. The view that the God has essence and he has attributes. And that the, uh, the attributes are ontologically different from the essence of God. So that, that is my view. And I believe that the power of God is different from the knowledge of God. So we can distinguish. When we say the, the knowledge of God, we're talking about his ability to know or uh, to, to perceive information, to perceive information. His power is his ability to do things. Now, what I'm saying is, just as I am able to distinguish between godly power and godly knowledge, on your view of divine simplicity, is God have real power, which is distinguishable, discernible, from God's knowledge or not? That's all it is. So, the question, the question you asked is whether they are discernible or not. That's actually going to be on the part of the reason, reasoning. Now again, the reason why they are going to be distinguishable is, as Aquinas explains, there are certain divine perfections as instituted into creatures that allow us to, by way of analogy, apply them to God. We can still say that God has power if by power we mean the ability to actualize potencies. Sorry? Uh, power we mean the... Sorry, I just have to pause there because you asked me a question. The ability to actualize potencies. I'll continue. So, because God has the ability to actualize potencies, we can ascribe that to God. And because God is able to possess forms, we can also ascribe that to God. However, the divine perfection of knowledge and power on the part of God are going to be the same thing as his existence, as Aquinas explains. Now, bear in mind, your question was on whether we can know these different things. Now, my question to you, as I have 10 seconds left, is going to be, again, whether these things are going to be something about the subject Allah that are not the whole of the subject Allah. Please answer that specific question, if you can. From one sense, yes, to answer your question. From one sense, yes. It's something about the subject Allah, which is not about the whole of Allah. In one sense, yes. The answer is yes. Because when we talk about the power of God, in one sense, we're talking about something about Allah, which is not about, which is not an exhaustive list of all the things about Allah. Because when we talk about the knowledge, so the answer is completely yes, yes. Now, the second thing I'm saying to you now is, we have a very clear idea. God has power, God has knowledge, God has will. Is it not the case? that on your divine simplicity view of Thomas Aquinas, that in fact, there is no difference, there's no real ontological difference between power and knowledge. That's why you can say, well, actually the Father is the Son from one perspective, or the will of the Father is the will of the Son from one perspective, because all you're doing is, you're playing games with divine simplicity. We're trying to have to take it both. Because in, in reality, you said that God is, his power is yeah, his, his ability to actualize Actualized potencies. Had, I How can that be the case without compositional uh, attribution? Go ahead. Jesus okay, so is God, not a Muslim. Appreciate it. Jesus is God, not a Muslim. So, Muhammad is no, not the Because you answered Muhammad. yes to that question, Muhammad that would mean that you accept Muhammad. that God would have metaphysical Jesus parts. Is not a now, because you accept that Allah God has metaphysical Islam. parts, you accept it's metaphysical Islam. composition Islam. in God. So you're a compositionist Allah. by that view. Now, now, the second Muhammad idea is, is that due to being a compositionist, your God would be metaphysically finite because all things that are metaphysically composite would be metaphysically finite. Now, to answer the question of Aquinas and power and knowledge, as I've explained before, the distinction between real relations can still exist under Aquinas' Thomistic view. So Aquinas doesn't believe that there can't be any distinctions between the persons. He believes that the persons are really distinct. And the reason he believes they're really distinct is because in relation to the essence, the Father and the Son are going to be identical, but in relation to each other, which is what a real relation is, they can still be distinct. So that's not an issue. So just to answer the question quickly before my time runs out. Time is already up. Yeah, no, I just have to. But just, I'll give you some more. Yeah, time. thank you. So just. You said. No, not exactly. So just to explain what you um, asked. Would you accept, therefore, that your God is metaphysically finite because your God is metaphysically composite? All right, so right, one second. the yeah. kind of composition that we think would lead to that kind of conclusion is the kind of composition which means that if you remove a thing or increase a thing or put something into it, that it either goes larger if it's increased or it gets smaller when it's reduced. And that is something, for example, that if I were to, it's something which would be susceptible to uh, decomposition or would be susceptible to disassembly or susceptible to what you call the principle of separability. So if something can be actually separated, we don't believe 
that God's knowledge can be separated from his power in an actual ontological sense. It will be that sense which would cause the conclusion that you're talking about. So we don't believe that God is temporal in the sense that you're talking about. You have answered all your questions. Now it's your turn to answer the question, which is if you don't believe a God that's knowing and that's powerful in that real sense, then you, what kind of God do you really believe in? You're closer to being an atheist than you are to being a Christian because the, you, you believe in a God with effectively no attributes. Right, time's he's up. not powerful, he's not, is that true or not? So, this is very important because you try to argue the kind of composition that would go to that is if it can be taken away or added to. However, inseparability... Uh, five minutes. Yeah, so, inseparability does not reg uh, disregard parthood. For example, the distinction between a body and a soul in heaven. Bodies and souls are inseparable in heaven, yet they are still going to be parts of the subject of a human being. You can still be composite as a, as a thing, even if they are inseparable. So your argument there has been uh, essentially disregarded. Because the idea is that just because you have something that's inseparable doesn't mean that they're no longer parts. You can still have parts even if they're inseparable. Body and soul composition still exists in heaven and you cannot separate the body and the soul in heaven as I've explained. Now, on the part of a person asking here about atheism, the idea, yeah, thank you. So, the idea is that Aquinas addresses real relations in God. This is the answer to the question. Aquinas posits that the persons are to be defined as real relations in God and thus simplicity is still affirmed. So you can still have real distinctions among the persons, and yet you still have the distinctions uh, in regards to the essence. Look, here's the, here's the difference between me and him. I've been very honest about my theology. He's trying to cover it up, because the truth about his theology is this. <laughs> his theology, divine simplicity, go and Google it and research it in your own self. Mm -hmm. They do not believe in actual ontological distinctions between the attributes of God, which means they believe in a God that doesn't have power, that doesn't have knowledge, that doesn't have will, That's they don't have real will. Beyond, and I beyond, find it surprising beyond. that he was talking to me about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit having the same will, when isn't will something that can be susceptible to composition? Is it something that he mentioned power? He said something, oh, it's the potential to actualize. Isn't that something that could be on his idea, divine simplicity, that be susceptible to composition on his idea? So seconds. he realizes that if he goes down that route, he becomes really an atheist for all the intent of both, or a deist. He's a deist. Because really, he doesn't believe in a God with attributes. Or a classical theist. That's what he becomes. And so, how can the classical theist believe in Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Three different things. I mean, isn't this the most flagrant composition in the world. You've got three and one and one and three, and you say you don't believe in composition. Yeah. You're talking to us about uh, will and power. It's ridiculous, isn't right, it? Right, time's over. So, what you were just doing is essentially complaining about the view that I actually espoused. However, that wasn't the view that I espoused okay. at all. In relation to power and will, in terms of their formal definition, they can be applied to God, but as Aquinas says, they would have a relation to God eminently and simply. So, on the part of God, God would simply be pure existence itself, that has no issue as to whether we could say, could God, qua being, do these things or have these certain divine perfections? That has nothing to do with composition there because we're not affirming such as this thing from the part of God. However, on your part, you were clear about your compositionism and your argument that God was not finite did not substantiate enough to conclude such. When you argued that God has parts metaphysically that would mean that your god is metaphysically finite because of his composition of such so could you answer why you believe that your god is metaphysically finite there you go he uh, lied by saying that i believe that god has parts i mean either he's not been listening or he's lying either are things we've observed from this behavior of this individual before the point i'm saying to you is this how can you be complaining, to use your term, about composition and you believe in the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit? How can you be talking to us about divine simplicity and you've complicated, right, in numeric form, the numbers of the persons of God? The only way out of this is to say, this is not a, a, an ontological distinction, this is just a numeric distinction, but all three are really one in every sense, in which case, uh, you're not a tri you don't believe in the Trinity. Sorry to say, there is no Trinity. You might as well just say what we say is that right. only one God. But if you believe in divine simplicity, and once again, please research it. Divine simplicity, they do not believe in the distinction between actual power, actual knowledge, actual will. The moment you start saying God can do, excuse me, God can do this, God can do that. How could it be the case when God is not meant to have any other Ahmed, thing ontologically separate or different or Ahmed, distinguished from the essence? Minute. Go ahead. Okay, so my timer cut out, right? I didn't set the timer before. So you're going to have to permit me.
Huh? We're going to the event. We're going to so, just to clarify, okay, right? This is very verbose, and I can I can do a similar thing. I'll see how I do. Now, everyone that is watching this video, please go and research divine simplicity and the various articulations of divine simplicity. As this man has admitted, he admitted that in a very strong sense, he said yes, in a sense, they are going to be something about the subject Allah that is not the whole of the subject Allah. By this notion then and this definition, it would yes, be, yes. hold on, it would be that the subject Allah is going to be composite. Now, he tried to attack the notion of the Trinity and say that I should be a classical theist. Well, as he should know, most Christian missiologists, most Christians in the patristic tradition were classical theists. They were, as Augustine explains, as the Cappadocians were as well. Now, on your part, since you believe that these attributes in pertaining to the subject Allah are that which is not the whole, you therefore believe fragrantly Time's up. that there is some sort of metaphysical composition. To answer the question. Time's up. Is it? Maybe. So here, here we have it again. Now He's my time was up actually. So. Okay. Yeah, go on. Okay. So he's, re he's reiterating the point. He believes that ha a, a being with multiple attributes is compositional in the same way that I have Jenga and I disassemble it. That it, it, it alludes to that the contingency of something in that, that same way. I'm saying prove that. If that's your claim, please prove. Please prove that. I want to see the proof for that. Number two, if you're, my, my postulation is as follows. I'm saying that classical theism is incompatible with the Trinity. It's incompatible with the idea of a loving God. God doesn't love. Don't say God loves. As a Christian, you, you, you pride yourself on the fact that God loves. On divine simplicity, God doesn't love. Because love doesn't exist in God. Love is not even there. This guy who was talking to me before talked about how God has relationship with love. Could you admit now, God, your God is not a loving God in any real sense. Your God is not a merciful God in any real right, sense. Yeah. Your God is not a willing God in any real sense. Your God is not a powerful God in any real God. Your God right, is not time even is a up. God so, in any real sense. When it comes to this idea now, <laughs> we will answer these uh, questions and that's completely fine. So, when it comes to the attributes as applied to God, given their formal definition, they will simply, as I've said again, relate to God in an eminent way. If love, and you must provide a definition, if love means to will the good for someone else, then God simply needs to will the divine essence for all things that pertain to existence, and thus he has classified as really loving in a real sense. Again, your terms and notions are vague, and the reason that they are vague is because you're... Oh, what? And the reason that they are vague is because on the part on the divine simplest and the classical theist, they've already said that these formal constitutive definitions can be applied to God in exactly their relation to creatures. God can still be really loving and really merciful as simply the justice of God as applied to creatures. Gregory the theologian says the exact same Why thing. I, 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 no, By analogy, right. So in a real sense, God can be loving, I'll give you God five can be merciful, and so on and so okay. forth. Okay, he said that God, God's love is his willing to do good for something or another essence, or another being. That's another not being. what I said. He's, he's willing to be good. He said something like that, right? Say now, something like that? Yes. That's now, not what I said. The point is, is if God's attribute of love is contingent on his attribute of willing, no problem, no problem. That's the view of the Ashadis. That's no problem. But the issue is this. You've now affirmed, you've now affirmed what? The will of God. Is that not composite? Look at this. Can you imagine this guy? He's talking about the will of God. Will, will this and that. How can God have will, which is separate from his existence and his absolute existence, and that not be composition? So you want to have your cake and eat it both. Exactly. So you, uh, you want, uh, it's, it's, it's composition when we're talking about the power and the knowledge. But when he starts talking about the will, it's not composition. It's definitely composition the same way. Why not? No, it's not. How would you how would you define God's will if it's not something which is uh, attributed as an ontological status of God? Yeah. It's something which is separate to this as a subject to the total will of God. Is the God is the will of God is it uh, separate to the the total subject or not? As his definition, of course you can't. The thing is, if you believe in the divine simplicity, you believe in a God with zero attributes. All right, time's zero up. Zero actual attributes. So, is that not the case? The only so, God's essence, but not attributes. Now, let me let me explain very ex <coughs> explicitly, right? <coughs> so. Like I was saying before, okay, and as I've been saying this entire time, you tried to give an erroneous notion of will, and you said that actually love is going to be contingent on the will. 
Now again, according to the scholastic tradition, will is just going to be the natural appetite towards the final cause. That is literally just going to be God qua being. Now all we're doing is saying in applying these formal definitions to God, this would be the case. What we're not saying is that God is a conglomerate of ontological items that exist in him, which is what you have said. You said that these things have their own ontologies and that they are on the part of the subject of Allah, multiple entitative things. Now again, ontologies and entities are going to be treated as the same. I'm not ascribing mind or being to any of them. No, I am ascribing being to them because they, these things exist. You believe in a conglomerate of existent entities. That thumbs is up. the issue. Thumbs up, thumbs up. That is polytheistic thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. or compositionist. Right, right, sure. Go on. Okay. Uh, he said that uh, when he when he talked about will, the definition of will is appetites towards final causes. That's what he said. Appetites towards final causes, which is akin to kind of emanationism. It's like, for example, God doesn't actually have a choice in the matter. It's like the sun and the rays of the sun. It just happens, which means that when you say that God loves you, he's not choosing to love you. He just happens to love you, just as that sun happens to uh, uh, express its rays on me right now. God is like your son. That sun over there is your God, effectively. He has no will. He has no choice. He has no power. He has no knowledge. That's your God. And I believe you, believe me, this man here, he doesn't believe in that. The Christians don't believe in that nonsense because the, the Christians believe in the love in God. So they can try and push this onto the Christian belief. It's not Actually, the Christian he's belief. Like They're trying to have their cake and eat it both. If you want to believe in divine simplicity, you can't idea. have divine simplicity, trinity, and multiple attributes, a loving God, a willing sure God, all at the same minute. time. Uh, you can't have it all. You can just say so just that I believe a in a God akin to the sun, expressing his will like the will uh, uh, like the sun expresses its race. All right, cool. So I have a minute as well, right? So don't mean to interrupt. Wait, wait, what's Let's go, uh, brother. We we'll have to go. We'll now I just want to make one final remark. I have to go, brother. Oh, yeah. one, one, good one, go. one brother. remark. Brother. Now again, this is one remark. I have to go, brother. Your God is going to be <laughs> similar go. like the sun yeah. in that it is now, composite. Brother. It's okay. Your God is similar like the sun in that it is composite metaphysically. Thank you. So I go. That's it. So as you can see, he used a sneaker as an excuse to go away from the conversation. He tried to argue that God isn't metaphysically composite, even though he extrinsically said, he explicitly said that God has attributes that are separate from his essence. He literally said these things in a real manner, in a real sense that they are separate from his essence. Now, he then said, no, they're not like Jenga that they can come in and out. But he is still affirming metaphysical composition. And because he affirms metaphysical compositionism, like I said, his God is finite. I gave the example of real relations on the part of God. And he used Sneeko to run away from the conversation that we were having. Now, I did want to talk to Sneeko. I did want to discuss with Sneeko. However, the I am the Warner guy said that I have to take off my mask. And we know that that's not going to happen. Because the last time I was saying, even with my mask on, my life got threatened. So I'm not stupid. Okay. Now, as we have argued, he doesn't know anything about Aquinas. He doesn't know anything about divine simplicity because he openly mischaracterized the view. He doesn't understand what knowledge is. And he said explicitly that knowledge is something about the subject Allah that isn't the whole of the subject Allah. That is compositionism. That is compositionism. God is wholly loving, wholly wise, wholly good. Okay, that's it.